Hey guys, Tech Adventure with the video for you guys. In today's video, we're gonna be reviewing the M1 MacBook Pro that was released last year of November. And we decided to do this review to tell you guys everything that you need to know, the good, the bad, and the overall experience we have so far with the newer MacBook that, as you know, this is one of the hottest selling MacBook or laptops, for the matter of fact, on the market as well. So before we dive into the video, if you guys are new to the channel, we do a lot of tech news reviews and giveaways, so make sure to hit that subscribe button. Also, if you guys are in the market for one of these phenomenal MacBooks on the market right now, they actually discounted on Amazon.com, so make sure you guys check out the link in the description section, and by the time you're watching, it'll probably drop a little bit more on the price. And let's dive into this review video for you guys. The first thing first is the body of the MacBook. As you can see here, the MacBook Pro here has a slim body. It's similar to the, the previous design as well. Apple hasn't changed much into it. That's probably one of the big thing you have heard that it's a similar body. So if you had a previous case for your or upgraded from that device, you can simply slap that case. And that's why you have that design. The one thing we noticed between it is that you only have two Thunder port or USB four ports just from the design perspective and of course the apple logo you can't miss as you see here this does not light up like the older generations that it used to light up that's one of the design that i don't really like because i usually liked it when it had that the light up apple logo because it made the thing look cool so by first look of it we're going to go ahead and simply you know open this up and as you can see here the m1 macbook here and there's a lot of stuff going on this one and probably the biggest thing is the actual chip the m1 chip and the m1 chip by design it's the first time apple built their own chip as you know in the past apple used the intel version of their chip so they were relying on a third party and they finally decided to bring their own version of the silicon chip known as the m1 and surprisingly apple has out them themselves and a lot of ways it you know, everyone that has reviewed this MacBook simply put it that this is a game changer. And the way we've seen some of the metrics in terms of actual speed tests and much more is proven that it is definitely a game changer. Just running simple multi-core and single core tests, you just notice if you look at these stats here from some of the uh, test runs that has been done by some of the analysts here is that you'll notice M1 MacBook Pro compared to the previous generation just beats it in almost some areas, almost 70-80% or greater. You just look at these on the multi-core and even on the single core, you notice that 500 uh, score higher and even almost 2,000 score higher. And if you compare it to some of the MacBook, like one that you pay almost uh, 3 thousand dollars or more, which is this one, the i9 uh, core in was released in 2019 this macbook itself is close to around probably three grand but you're paying a fraction of the price to get that sort of metric and the single core you'll see the m1 surprisingly beating that and the same goes for other bench tests we have done like sin sin bench here we did get uh, all of these tests and you can see that by differential contrast is that that m1 macbook you're paying around 1200 depending on what model you get you get a performance of a three thousand dollar macbook and that's itself is just crazy unbelievable that apple was able to do that and talking about even that some of the other things we know that with the m1 chip you're able to get 8 gig and 16 gig and you might be wondering does that make a difference well to tell you guys if you guys are considering between the 8 gig versus 16 gig if you're a normal user meaning you just use it simply for uh, browsing apps natively on the app even photoshop to a degree the 8 gig gets the job done and that's been proven so far just basically doing running tests and stuff because of that 8 core cpu and the 8 core gpu even when you're gaming and such you don't really notice of course 16 gig is nice to have and it looks like you're limited with 8 gig but Honestly, you really aren't limited in a lot of ways. And even when you talk about the storage device of the MacBook itself, you'll notice things that the speed that you get, you're able to upgrade it to two terabyte of SSD, although the base one, slightly something that we're disappointed with Apple that they start you off at 256 gig for that. It doesn't really seem much, especially for a MacBook. So you probably are gonna be going with the 512 
a gig one that we have here and if you're really looking to put a lot of stuff you can go with the two terabyte of ssd and you notice the ssd speed is substantially bigger than the previous generations we saw you're almost able to do a 3.3 gig of read speed that that's pretty incredible you know in terms of speed test and the next aspect of besides performance we know that the macbook is meant to do performance intensive activity but when it comes to performance you think you will take a hit on the battery life well that's actually not the case and that's something probably one of the biggest uh, biggest piece that we like about the m1 macbook is the battery life we get out of this there's a thermal efficiency activated cooling so you really don't even hear the fan you you could say pretty much the fan is non-existent we're not even sure if there's a fan inside if you open it up so that's one thing we want to mention and apple claims it to be all day battery but if you're a regular user it's almost multi-day battery we would even claim it because they're saying 20 hours of battery life and that's the longest on any macbook ever that is absolutely true if we did a true test we get around 17 to 18 hours of just being on a full single charge and to me you know if you're a regular user you're probably going to be using it somewhere between five to six hours if you divide that by you're getting about three four days of on a single charge which itself again just amazing amazing when it comes to a laptop in this price range to get that much about the battery life and as you know if you're a macbook user that's really one of the biggest wins and being able to almost double that battery life from the previous generation again a game changer pieces that we notice and the one other thing that we want to mention along with the performance the battery is this aspect of being able to run a rosetta 2 and being able to use apps that you would use on your iphone and ipad directly on the mac os big sur so if in the past you had a limitation where you had to pick up your phone or your ipad to use certain apps well guess what now you're able to actually download those apps to this macbook and able to use it so you don't even have to grab your phone and to that degree i think that is another big big win for apple is being able to use rosetta to to run those apps that weren't meant to be run on MacBook in the past, but now you're able to do that with that M1 chip and much more. When it comes to the display itself, this is a 13 inch display, 13.3 you might say, and the one thing we do kind of want to state is that you have this bezel that of course there's a little bit of going on and that's probably one thing we don't like, but the one thing we notice it's a beautiful display because of the brightness you get out of it you're also able to get in this p3 25 percent more of that srgb so brilliant contrast on especially if you're doing photo editing and video editing which again because of those performance metric we've seen it's able to just kick ass in terms of being able to deliver power at the same time being able to truly get you to be able to do photo editing video editing and see the actual photo footage that you would get and of course that true tone technology which allows the laptop to adjust automatically the ambient lighting to make it more feel a real contrast to it the next thing we want to talk about is the keyboard itself as you'll notice here it's a backlit keyboard and with a touch bar as well you also have fingerprint reader so if you use the really older generation of macbook that wasn't available now you have that available this is a magic keyboard so if you really like to type fast this keyboard is really nice when it comes to typing we were able to test it out based on previous versions of it and it just feels so slick and smooth on your hand the power that it brings it's just quite amazing and that goes to show if you or looking for a MacBook on day that you're working on, probably another win for it. So now let's talk about sort of the bad. We won't quite say the bad. So the one thing we notice is that on the actual tech specs sheet, you notice that the FaceTime uh, camera, which is a HD camera, it's still at 720 pixel. And that seems uh, odd because you're able to do 1080 on the actual iPhone itself. So why has Apple upgraded the front 
HD camera, especially in a day and age where you're using it to do online classes, you're doing it for your conference call, being able to FaceTime and video call friends and family and a lot more. You want to be able to do that like you would with the iPhone, right? Well, to give you guys the news is that although that it is a 720 pixel front facing camera, because of that M1 chip that's built in, it's able to process that image more clear. So what that really means is because the M1 chip helps the low light areas that you've seen in the previous 720, the pictures actually come out more brighter, more cleaner, and there's less noise reduction. So it's not as dark as you expected. You get more face detection with the neuro engine to give it more of that white balance and exposure that you get to make your skin feel more natural, especially if you're sitting outside. You notice that the camera 720 feels like it's not actually a 720 pixel camera and it looks more of a 1080 pixel that you're getting. And the second bad thing we would probably say, of course this is something we know that Apple has been doing quite often and something Apple could definitely improve on in the next generation that's coming out, Apple might take that into consideration, it's the amount of port. you notice there's only two Thunder ports, so you're very limited and you have this headphone jack. So to show you guys that these are the two Thunder ports and you get that headphone jack right there. So why has Apple kept with that 3.5 millimeter headphone jack when starting with their iPhone 7 lineup, they went to the lightning port. That's something doesn't really make sense from a design perspective. Maybe Apple just wants you to buy the AirPods so you don't have to use the headphones at all. Maybe it's a marketing move, we don't really know. But one thing to get around that, although it is a bad that we consider of this is buying one of these hubs that you can purchase on Amazon or anywhere especially to go ahead and increase support for USB uh, 3 or if you need it for SD card reader, you also get another Thunder port. Some of them have um, much more going on. So this is really good because you're able to just go ahead and plug that in to the side of your laptop. While it's not really ideal because it isn't natively, you can grab these cheap part for a good maybe 15, 20 bucks, which we'll leave a link in the description section if you guys are in the market for one of these hubs, which make your life a little bit easier. But certainly it's still not ideal, but it definitely is a way to get around that. And to show you guys the software performance and how well this MacBook actually performs. So if we click on a site, as you saw here, you open up another tab, how quick it is to just able to launch on a decent Wi-Fi here, we we can just spin up as many apps we need to, and simply you notice when you're browsing, which most people usually are using their MacBook to browse. If you're not a developer or someone looking to do a lot of that, which again it does a phenomenal job of doing that as well, you'll notice when we launch apps, it's simply able to we'll launch it really quick. We're able to use that touch bar to type suggested. We're able to go ahead and change the lighting and everything much more. The touch bar t does take a time to get used to, so if you're not used to the touch bar, you might consider a con, but for me, uh, I think the touch bar is a great addition and it really does give that more futuristic look of it. So there you guys have it for the good and the bad. Our overall comparison of this MacBook is that it is definitely a game changer and when it comes to performance, when it comes to battery life, when it comes to the display and the much more work that you can get done with it. It is definitely a, one of the best MacBook we've seen so far in the previous years that Apple has designed with that performance, the keyboard, the display, and everything and much more. The cons or the bad we would say is that the design, they could have definitely improved the design, actually added the ports that you need so you don't have to go out buy another additional hub or something like that. Probably the biggest two things that we noticed. But aside those two cons, if you're in the market for a fast blazing laptop that lasts a really long time, probably the M1 MacBook is what you're gonna get in the market at a price that you can't beat right now. As you guys have seen the price on this one right now, if you were to buy it on Amazon, they have this model which is the 512 gig with the eight, eight gig of memory which is a unified memory 
which we're using right now. You can actually get this for the same price you would pay on the Apple site for $12.99. And that's why make sure you guys check out the link in the description check in. Hopefully by the time you guys check it out on Amazon and click that link, it's even uh, cheaper than that because for a $1,200, $1,300 MacBook to give you the performance of almost a close to $3,500 MacBook, that's definitely a steal. You can't beat that and being able to use that MacBook and this MacBook, it's going to last you probably a good at least five years or so, even if you are not getting the 16 gig, even the 8 gig will get you that sort of performance. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video of our review of the M1 MacBook, the good and the bad. If this video is helpful, please make sure that like and subscribe button. Also, if you guys haven't hit that, have not checked out the links, make sure you guys check those links out. See you guys next time.